May I first request uh, Mr. GVL Narasimha Rao to please, uh, uh, if you can uh, enrich us more about uh, the approach of the government and uh, the advice to the businesses and the service sector. May I request you for your address, please. Good morning, and uh, first, thank you for inviting me for this to this important uh, function. I think uh, there is a lot to be optimistic about. I think some of the comments that were made earlier possibly might make people a little uh, worried. I know there are uh, there are uh, these are transformative times. One is you carry on with business as usual, as happened in this country for decades. The other is to bring about transformation. And transformation does not happen uh, uh, suddenly. It does take time. And also it, uh, it brings about a huge, it brings about a completely new dynamism in an economy. What Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji is, has been trying to do over the past two and a half years is not to take things as usual. People have not given him a mandate to simply occupy the office of the Prime Minister and run the affairs of the country for five years uh, uh, and then and go for another election. People expected uh, it, it. It's. It's the people of this country, 125 crore people of the country who have aspirations. And therefore, what has, whatever he has been trying to do, whatever he has done over the past two and a half years, is to realize the aspirations of people of India. And when we talk about people of India, it does not conform to a particular class. We possibly, I think even I have been in, um, uh, uh, in, a, in a consulting business, so to say, I have been in research. I've been into uh, partly into a marketing sector. We, you see, each sector has its own expectations, but the, but but it's the ordinary people of this country who have actually been left out of governance for the past several decades. It might sound cliched, but this is what Trump also was trying to say last night. So, Prime Minister, he 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 comes with Prime Minister. Mr. Modi came into office with rich experience of governing a state for 13, 12, 13 years. And whatever transformation that he was able to carry out in Gujarat, I think if, if some of you have had an opportunity to study what he did, he brought about a complete uh, 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 change in the scale of that particular uh, economy. Agriculture was revived in a huge way. The growth experienced by the government of Gujarat while he was helming it was almost in double digits. What he's trying to do today at the national level will certainly give a huge impetus to our economy in the, in the financial year FI 18 and FI 19 and, and thereafter. I think this temporary disruption, I think we can see that there was this demonetization has led to a, a temporary disruption but then this was required. How can you, how can a country of 120 crore people carry on with uh, uh, governance where more than only 20 lakh people claim they have incomes of 10 lakh and above? Is, does it not sound extremely odd? Actually, I live close by. In my colony itself, I think I can find about, uh, about 10,000 people who have incomes of more than 10 lakh and above. So there has been, people have simply not been, uh, uh, not been uh, truthful, let's, let's accept it. Businesses have been carrying on bus with business in a particular way, and that was considered to be normal. Not, not being accountable, not paying taxes was considered accountable. That's something government needs money. Where do you invest money if you don't have revenues? So certainly, the attempt is to ensure that we have better tax compliance, we have better, uh, we have a wider, wider tax base, and also ensure that people find it convenient, people find it, uh, uh, find it proper to really pay taxes. Un un until now, it was considered stupid. If somebody was paying taxes, this is what a lot of chartered accountants would tell you. Why do you need to pay taxes? I'll tell you a way out how you can avoid taxes. 
how you can uh, carry on with your cash business, how you can ensure that you minimize your tax, you minimize your uh, 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 tax liabilities. But I think what the Prime Minister has done, to my mind, it has been welcomed by 99% of the people. Even people who have not been paying taxes, they find it better. Now it's better to be transparent, accountable, pay your taxes and have no headaches. And, and, and contribute your, your bit to the, the national uh, uh, income and national growth. So I think this is required a mindset change. And I think this, this, this effort, this uh, uh, demonetization may have led to a, a forced behavioral change, but at the end of it, I think most people have now understood that it is our national duty to pay taxes so that government has revenues to really spend on uh, on, on, on growth, uh, on, on ensuring growth, on ensuring investments. Last two and a half years, if you see, it has been a very success story. We have had the highest growth rates in, in among the developing economies, among the large economies of the world. We also have uh, had a big increase, enhancement in FDI inflows at a time when most countries of the world uh, are experienced a declining uh, a negative trend in FDI inflows. What we needed was more investment, private investment, which is what we expect will get a big spur because of uh, expected lower uh, interest rates in uh, maybe in the next few months. So I, th I think this a, a mindset change is what was required. Because you cannot unleash an economy, you cannot grow, even in the quality front. I think unless we change our mindsets and focus on quality, and, and, and make a name for ourselves, because honestly, in, in the international global arena, quality and India, not necessarily they go together. We are known as a country which has very strong technical skills, a, people who, a country which can provide technical manpower. We are known as, in the world as a, as a big country, as an educated country. We are known as a country that offers big market, but quality, I think leaders like you who have actually achieved excellence in, in, in quality, honestly, I think that needs to be uh, recognized, that needs to be uh, awarded. I, possibly this will spur a lot more people to focus on quality. A quality excellence in governance is what the government is, has been focusing on. In the last two and a half years, I think if you see, we have not really made a big jump in, the, in, in, uh, in terms of our ease of doing business rankings. But certainly if you look at specific processes, you look at specific activities, you, I, I think you will find there is a major change which has already been uh, acknowledged in, in the ease of doing business report. And we will certainly achieve bigger rankings in the, in the years to come because a lot of these changes require time to really get uh, uh, get acknowledged or get measured. Uh, so my own, uh, uh, my, my, my message, my, my submission to all of you is that the future is extremely bright. Okay, and but we have to realize that we have to change the way we have been conducting businesses. We have to think that we have to change the way we have been approaching our businesses opportunity or, lim or limitless, but I think people who have actually suffered are those who are actually not integrated into this kind of a, 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 a futuristic economy. People, we have a large part of our, 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 our uh, industry which has been doing business the way possibly it was done years ago, decades ago. So honestly, I think this, this, this new, the new policy decisions of the government, I'm, ho I'm sure will, will spur more people to focus on quality, more people to become more accountable to, their, to the way they conduct businesses, they become more transparent. Look at the range of initiatives that this government has taken in, in, in just about two, two and a half years. Be it Digital India, Startup India, Stand Up India, these are all, this, all this will take time to really show results. But the focus is on ensuring that you have entrepreneurs coming even from marginalized sections. You have, uh, you, uh, 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 you, have invest, uh, you have people, you have women focusing on investments, becoming entrepreneurs. This government has focused on self-employment in a big way. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Mudra scheme because it doesn't really 
target or address people like us. This government has, has a very special pro-people, pro-poor orientation. Honestly, that is not something that many of us, I'm, I'm including myself in your, in your group, many of us, that's not our priority. Certainly, we have, we have a particular area of interest in a business, and we want that to grow, and we want the right environment for that to grow. I, I think while government is certainly ensuring that you have the right business environment to, to, uh, to do business and grow, the government has a, a constitutional obligation to ensure that the marginalized sections, people who have been left out of, uh, of our economic processes, they are actually included in this. So it's not the mere growth number that should matter. It, it certainly matters to the government. It matters to all of us. But to the man living in the village, to the, to the poor man who doesn't get 100 rupees a, a, a day to really live his life, for him your number doesn't matter. What matters to him is the distribution of wealth. What matters to him? What are the opportunities for him? So if you look at the initiatives, the government has been working parallelly at both the levels, ensuring that we have a very uh, uh, pro-people, inclusive economic growth by, by, by spending heavily on programs like Skill India, programs like uh, Startup India, and at the same time, creating the right economic environment for the businesses uh, to grow, for the new businesses to come in, for the new young entrepreneurs to really find the right ecosystem for them to really uh, uh, to set up businesses and grow. So if you look at the range of initiatives, I think things which have taken decades have actually materialized in a short term. You've seen how GST is almost a reality. It will take a few months before actually it kicks off. But we have, we have the most important hurdle in this was getting, uh, 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 getting a constitutional amendment enacted. Difficulty was getting states to be on board. Now you have a complete unanimity. So it's a matter of few months. The GST itself is expected to give us about a 2% jump in, in the overall GDP rates. So we are certainly FY19, if not FY18, FY19 we are certainly looking at a double digit growth. It's, it's not a... It's, it's not something that we are being un, unrealistic about. Double digit growth is bound to happen in FY19 and thereafter. And if you look at the, uh, the, the revenue, tax revenue collections that the finance minister talked about a month ago, a, few, a couple of weeks ago, be it direct taxes, indirect taxes, the collections are up. I certainly see a big spur coming back to the, uh, to the economy. So I think let's, let's, let's be very optimistic. We have a, a huge potential that exists out there for us. And, uh, and what, whatever the government has done, I think will certainly, whatever limited and short term dent in, in some of the activities, to my mind, in a, in a manner of uh, three months, you will see uh, twice that amount of momentum that will come back to the economy. And those who are prepared to really take up that kind of a, uh, uh, who are prepared to cash in on such an opportunity will certainly find, uh, uh, will certainly be able to really benefit from these opportunities. So I think I, I think I've already exceeded my uh, limit. Uh, I, I only wish to tell you because this is a very important function. My only uh, submission to you is the future is very bright. Three months, two months of uh, cash crunch has certainly put some negativity in the minds of a lot of people and possibly, possibly derailed operations of many companies which had a particular way of doing uh, a business. But certainly, I think the way forward, I think what the di digital economy, a uh, digitized uh, 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 transactions is what is likely to ensure that your businesses will not only become transparent, they will also grow faster. I think this is the way forward. There is no way of, there is no question of going back to the system that prevailed before November 8. I think we all must understand this. And I think as leaders, as industry leaders, as, as people running businesses, I'm sure you are the ones who can really make a big difference and ensure such a, uh, such a reality actually uh, comes about.
and we don't really go back to the way we were doing businesses three months ago. We simply, I think there is an, there is an inherent tendency to really go back to the ways of doing businesses that we were doing. But my appeal to you is, this is the way forward. This is not only a, 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 a circumstance, it, it's not circumstances that are forcing you to do it. This is the way to do businesses. World over, I don't think any large businesses can really operate on uh, large cash transactions. But here we have cash transactions happening on, a, on such a wider scale. I think that needs to be curbed. And this, is, uh, this will bring about not only transparency, this will also bring about a lot of uh, efficiency in the way people run their businesses. Thank you.